going on Creality K1 owners? Today we're going to be doing an overview of the cartographer installed in the K1 series. For this you are going to need a printed mount to receive the cartographer and to also install into the printed carriage, showing you the heated insert locations on both the side and the bottom. We'll start with the side, which are going to be two standard M3 heated inserts. These aren't as wide in diameter, allowing for a perfect fitment for this location. For the bottom, we are going to be installing two boron style M3 heated inserts in both of these locations. This is how your mount should look after you've got the heated insert sunk in place. It's not only going to secure the cardo mount to the carriage with the side heated inserts, but also to secure the cartographer board to the bottom of the mount. Now taking a look at the carriage, what is worth mentioning is there are two slots closest to where the mount will be installed. This is for a zip tie so that you can secure the cable, that way it isn't getting yanked or pulled out of the female connector while in motion. Let's take the time now to get the cardo mount in place. With the ribs on either side of the mount, they will slide into the slots on the inner portion of the bottom of the carriage and the heated inserts should be viewable on both sides to receive our hardware. In order to secure the cartographer mount to your carriage, you're going to be needing these two M3x8 flathead screws to be placed in the side, through the carriage, and into the cartographer mount. Do make note of the mount's position with the flat back facing the rear of your machine. Now let's take some time to go over the cartographer itself. For this application, we are using the 90 degree or right angle USB board. Now the cable that arrives with the cartographer will be good for install, but I went ahead and picked up a Richter mouse cable. This does have the correct four pin on the one side that will connect to the cartographer. However, it does have a USB on the opposing side which does help us as we'll need to flash the appropriate firmware onto the cartographer before installing it on our printer. You'll be able to find the information on how to do that in the description below. After we've installed the appropriate firmware, we are ready to install the cartographer itself. For that, we will need two M3x6 button head screws. Placing the board in the correct orientation, this will find the holes for the heated inserts that we installed earlier on, and we're ready to put our hardware in to secure it in place. Revisiting the zip tie location on the rear of the carriage, this secures the cable directly above the connector. It'll be pathed off to the left if you're looking directly at the printer closest to the print head cable chain. Now it's time to install our hot end. For this configuration, I opted to go with the Dragon Ace. This is a Dragon Ace specific carriage, which you can find on the Booty Call Jones Linear Rail Gantry GitHub. Once this is installed, there should be about a 2 to 3 millimeter height difference between the tip of the nozzle and the face of the cartographer itself. This hot end, unlike many other drop-in replacements, does not require any hardware from the bottom as it has an adapter plate which is hooked up directly to the heatsink, utilizing the four zirconia standoffs that come with the kit. Receive some socket head screws on the front and some flathead screws on the side. As with other applications, and I've made sure to cover this in the Booty Call Jones Linear Rail Gantry install. You can find the link for that below. After installing the cardo mount, I found that the 2 to 3 millimeter height difference was not achieved, so I went ahead to print another and get within that range. Since this mount was for a single use case, an adjustable mount is currently in the design process. By placing your machine on its side, you're able to access the feet on the bottom. You will need to remove all four corners, as well as the two M3s that are sitting in the flat portion of the panel. The exposed screws do not require removal. Attached to the bottom panel, you'll find the fan for the MCU. You can either disconnect this as I did, or place it on top of the printer while you perform the work down below. Because I opted to go with the Richter mouse cable, I needed to re-terminate the USB-A to a 4-pin connector which I pulled off of the cable that was provided. 
there were two grounds. I needed to make sure there was continuity on both sides of the wire, which is what required this step. Now let's go ahead and check the routing with that four pin connector in the USB port, following the rest of the cables all the way to where the raceway would be in the chamber itself. Let's take a closer look. I placed my newly added four pin connector into the USB port of the Creality mainboard making sure to stuff it up into a position that wouldn't come in contact with the Z-belt. I did make sure to also do some cable cleanup by zip tying it to the other cables. Now let's go ahead to reinstall our feet on the bottom of the printer, as well as the two M3s that we removed from the flat portion of the panel. To finish the cartographer cable run, we'll place it through the raceway after removing the covers, alongside the print head cable and the Bowden tube all the way to the print head itself. The cable will fall along the left side of the carriage if you're looking at it head on, and you'll connect it back into the cartographer board. Let's reinstall our raceway covers. The next step is to change the firmware, which is going to be detailed in a link in the description below. After the necessary firmware changes have been made, you will be able to utilize the cartographer for your speedy and accurate meshing and homing functionality. If you like this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe as I continue this journey in all things 3D. Make sure to change your firmware settings to adjust for the new cartographer install. Until next time, we'll see you soon.